Key West, as far as a destination, has something to offer almost anyone, really. It's the southernmost point in the United States. It has everything from world-class fishing to world-class nightlife. In my opinion, there's nowhere better in the world because you can go tarpon fish in the morning, sword fishing at night, and like we did, you can go fish the mutton spawn in the afternoon. Looks like we scored on weather, huh? Oh, dude, it looks beautiful. Sunny, light winds. It's kind of weird for Key West. I don't think I've been down here in a while without any wind. I know. Cody's a buddy of mine. We met ultimately competing against each other in tournaments. Throughout the years, we've kept in touch and, and become pretty good buddies and, and always end up getting together and, and seeing each other on the water. And we both you know, brought our girlfriends down, and I've never been down here in May, and I, know, I don't think Chris has either because we're usually tarpon fishing, and that's like our busiest time of year. So you know, for me, it was a different way to see Key West. Neither one of us had ever uh, had an opportunity to come down and fish the mutton snapper spawn in Key West. And for me to do that on its own would be awesome. For me to do it with Cody, he's probably one of the best offshore fishermen that I know. So yeah, the mud spawn, from what I understand, and you know, being my first time just from talking to locals down here and uh, captains, you know, every May and June, all these inshore muttons that live in the Marquesas and the patch reefs, you know, where you catch them most of the year, during May and June on the full moon, they kind of swim out to this area that's you know a high spot just outside the reef and you know it's just a giant ball of spawning fish we bumped around a little bit and and read the machine and, and marked some good fish and had some nice shows on the bottom machine so we set up right off the bat i got hit and it was obviously a, a big snapper oh phew. there he is there you go bro good job man there you go good job i just had a bite too Oh, that's a good one. Oh! You gotta be kidding me, dude. Oh, that was a big one. I got bit right there, too. Got him? Come on, man. Redemption. Ah, uh, there must be, that ledge must be right here, Wick, because this thing is didn't run the same spot that fish just broke you off in. Yeah? Yeah, he's running. Trying to get up tight on me. It's like a big snook, but they don't jump, you know, so they don't take right. a lot of that energy away with that. There he is. Crazy how how colorful the fins are, just the tips of them. I know. Like pink, yellow, orange. You know, we thought, okay, they're here, it's all good. And then it kind of, it just, it kind of got slow. We weren't catching them. We'd mark stuff every once in a while. So we start messing around a little bit as far as smaller hooks, lighter leader. And it was like, we couldn't buy a bite. These fish are just still balled up a little bit coming off that moon. Yeah, man, we're just spawn. We're just coming off that full moon, you know, first week in May here and kind of the ideal situation if you want to get on, you know, this spawning aggregation of muttons. And, we're about four or five days past the actual full moon, so mm -hmm. the bite's kind of transitioning from, you know, an afternoon meal to, to like more midday. of a morning, you know, yeah. midday thing. Yep. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Ray Marine. Go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. Yeah, I've heard about this, you know, and it's, it, I guess, probably because it coincides with our tarpon season. Yeah, man. I've never had a chance to come down and do it. Yeah, we're always, you know, 200 miles to the north <laughs> of here north. chasing tarpon and miss, missing out, and this is so fun. It's, it's like snook fishing, you know. In deep water. In deep water, you know, they fight just like it right off the bat. There he is. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's our boy. I'm on credit. Come on, come on. Oh God, there it is. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Kept beating that same area and 
it's tough to do sometimes. It's like demoralizing, yeah. oh, you know? We're sitting here second guessing everything. Oh, especially and, down here, we got, you know, we could run three miles out here and go catch a dolphin, or we can run mm -hmm. four miles in here and go catch. But this is why we're here. Permit, yeah. Snapper spawn, you know? We're this is why we're here. Doesn't, we're not going to catch them if we leave and go dolphin. Exactly, fish. that's a nice fish. Good fish. So pretty. Oh man, I cannot get over how pretty those fish are. We started getting bites. I dropped, hooked the fish. I got light leader, man. You got him, wait, good job, bro. Really light. Come on, get out. What is that saying? He's tight right drags on that freaking light. Light drags and light leaders? Yeah, exactly. This one is definitely not of uh, the same caliber as yeah, that last other one you had was the beast. Still a good fish, though. Absolutely. Nice fish. You can probably see if, if you're looking down down there, they probably blend right in with the bottom, that little, mm -hmm. the little bars, and they're sitting on the edge here in the sand. Camouflage. Look at them all in the machine, guys. And next thing you know, it went to just one, two, you know, I mean, to where we're doubled up, tripled up. Jesus got the big, big mutton snapper. What technique is this you're using? <laughs> the weak person <laughs> technique. The, uh, I got a giant mutton snapper technique. Oh, goodness. Ooh, look at this one. Look at that one. Woo, that's a big one, girl. Give me five. Give me five on I that one. Raise my arm. <laughs> Dude. That was insane. That's a giant QS mutton snapper. Look Good at that job. thing. Once you start getting bites, the bites itself can almost fire off a feed and trigger a feed, and it's just that activity. Nice, girl. Another good one. Good job. We were both sitting back watching, you know, both our girlfriends catching these giant muttons, but at the same time, like, I've never caught a mutton snapper that big, so I was just, can't, I couldn't wait to drop a rod down, but it was cool to see someone else, you know, with the same excitement. The fish slid down our way. We started hooking them, and we got into literally the best snapper bite that I've ever been on. You know, it was a domino effect after that. It was like every bait you dropped down, you know, the girls were getting pinned to the gunnel, rip and drag. Me and Chris were getting pinned to the gunnel. We were getting broke off. It was, you know, it was a Chinese fire drill, and that's what we came down here to do was catch giant mutton snapper. So it was cool we got to experience that, and. You know, it was even cooler that, you know, we sat there and watched, you know, our girlfriends catch world-class mutton snappers, you know, with what we came down to do. And we've never done it before. It was an awesome experience. Pretty mutton, brother. Sweet. That's what we came for. That's right. And it's crazy how small these, you know, they're only 10-pound fish. There's how much so brute hard. force, like a 20-pound snook right off the bat, you know? I know. Nice mutton, bro. Oh, yeah. That's what we came for, sweet! Heck yeah, brother. yeah, dude. Yeah! Beautiful. At that point, it's it's like, it doesn't even matter. Like, you're, you're getting broke off, you're losing fish. And although that kind of is like, oh man, you know, it's aggravating or whatnot, but it, it that's part of it and it doesn't even matter, you know? To see the the expression on the girls' faces and them laughing and struggling to, to fight these fish that, I mean, a, a 10, 15 pound mutton snapper will pull so hard that it's absolutely incredible so it's cool for cody and i to catch them it was awesome for us to catch them and to experience it but it, it was equally oh, if it. not uh more rewarding to see our girlfriends get involved and see them having such a great time there, there you go, go. You get line, you get line. good job good job it seems like every time we throw those chum and fire that's one it, down dude. bam that's gotta be it yeah look at that beauty uh -oh. yeah buddy uh-oh Nice job, look at that. Good job, Ash. <laughs> Fish tacos. It's a big snapper. Me and Wit, we're just gonna go up front and you guys run the show back here, all right? <laughs> we caught fish consistently until really we didn't, you know, we didn't really, we, we did it. We didn't need to catch any more. We didn't honestly even know how many we had. We knew it wasn't anywhere near what our limit would be. So we decided, you know what? It's, it's getting a little later in the afternoon. Let's go ahead and head back in. Go, go head to the house and cook up some dinner. And on our way back in, as we're coming into one of the channels coming into Key West, I see Cody comes off power and slows down and 
So I, I saw a tarpon roll and I look up and it, immediately I see a tarpon and then we see another one slurp and we see another one tail slap and bust and we're going, something weird's going on here. I grabbed a fly rod and uh, was making some casts or whatnot. And I'm like, certainly I'm gonna hook up. I mean, there's fish just going ballistic. And I, I had made a handful of casts. The girls all of a sudden are hooking up. They're yeah, tearing yeah, yeah. fish out. Sarah had jumped a fish that was probably a buck 30. It's fine. It's gone. It's gone. It popped off. And I'm going, all right, I'm, I'm getting involved here. So I look over and this rod's <laughs> bent in half going out. So I quick dump the fly rod and, and grab a hold of uh, the spinner that was going off and had a fish that was, you know, 100 pounds or so, 110 pounds. Jump in, aired it out a few times, got it up near the boat and uh, just put some heat on it and ended up pulling the hook. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. We're jumping fish on 30 pound leader and it was a perfect way to end a day, but I mean, that's what happens in Key West. You know, it doesn't matter if it's tarpon, you know, sailfish, you're always gonna run into something that you're not prepared for. That's the most important thing even down here in Key West is you always gotta be like thinking out of the box. You always gotta have every single piece of tackle that you could ever imagine because you're always going to run into something that you weren't thinking about. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Hooters, the cure for the common restaurant. The American Barrels, live free or die, a true American spirit. One of the great things about being in the Keys and in Key West is not just the fishing, but it's just the experience of being here, you know, the relaxing and, and hanging out of the house and cooking up some of your catch and, and the camaraderie amongst your friends. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it's almost impossible to have a bad time here. That is not a bird. It's really good. I brought down one of my skiffs. Cody brought down his offshore boat. We kind of spent the mornings fly fishing and flats fishing here in Key West. Like anytime you come down to the Keys, like it doesn't matter if you look for a week straight and it says it's gonna be beautiful, you're gonna get wind. That's just how it is. Like you're gonna have really windy days. And that's my theory why the fishing is so good here is because, you know, it'll be, it'll be good weather for two days and, you know, everyone will go fishing and it's phenomenal. And then 10 days straight, it blows 20 knots and, you know, maybe three or four guys fishing. So the pressure, is limited because of the weather here. 20 knot winds, fly rod, you know, you're gonna have to work for it, and we work for it. Cody's buddies with RT, Bob Trossett, who is a local guide here in Key West, and one of the best. Tremendous amount of world records, you know, super talented fisherman, doesn't matter, he's one of those guys, six inches of water to 2,000 feet, you know, he's the best, you know, at any of those aspects. So that's someone you wanna become friends with. And, you know, he comes and fishes with me a lot in Clearwater. And anytime I'm down here, I try to get out with him. He's always super busy. And it just lined the stars aligned that, you know, he was able to take us tarpon fishing. I've never been tarpon fishing down here. He always tells me how good it is. And, you know, me being from the west coast of Florida, Tampa Bay, Charlotte Harbor, you know, I think that we have, you know, some of the best tarpon fishing in the world. And I never was really that interested to go tarpon fishing down here. And, you know, I think Chris will attest to this. We got to go out with him, and it was an eye-opener, to say the least. So all we're gonna do is just fire this little crabby out and drift him back into current on the bobber. We got a little mud in the water. It's nice and dirty, perfect. What happens is these fish come on off the ocean, and they neck down in this channel. And then it opens back up in here into a big basin where they can come up and feed and everything at night. Oh, there we go. It didn't take long. Come on, jump, baby. Yeah, there you go. Showing us how it's done. Do I gotta fight him? Yeah. Oh, it's a little. <laughs> what was that? Three minutes? That's awesome. Nice job, RT. Oh. oh, pull the hook. God. Yeah. Three minutes into it. Got out there and saw one fish roll. Our teeth throws out. You know, he's being nonchalant like he usually is. Cool as a cucumber and hooks a fish right off the bat. I mean, that kind of set the tone for the night. I mean, after that, 
There's fish everywhere, and anything you put in the water, you hooked up. There it is. Oh, there he is. Good job, Just Cody. needed a little Whoa. instruction. Oh. A little guidance. Yeah, I'm sitting here in 25 knot winds tying a nail knot, and you guys are airing fish out already. Yeah, but I tell you what, I, I just went right to the crab. I don't mess around. <laughs> there he is. There we go. Woo, that's, a nice that's a big fish. All right, you guys Let's are go killing me. Let's go after him. Get it. Woo. Oh, no. Come on, be on there. Son of a yeah. Put a pole right now. Dang, damn it! Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with XS Sight Systems, the fastest sights in any life. Boatmaster Trailers, the name that represents quality. After seeing them air out a half a dozen fish, I decided I had had enough and, and I was gonna take a, take a run at it. So I grabbed a spinning rod and just out of habit, I just grabbed my rod on the boat, which was probably the lightest rod on the boat. Hey, Cody, uh, you can have the fly rod. I'm gonna go ahead and throw one of these crabs on. Uh, I'm fine with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, these, are, these are your other sons over yeah, here? Yeah, no, that's Robert, that's Chris. They've been coming here since they were uh, 12 years old by themselves. It's only a five minute boat ride, but. I love a place to grow up. Yeah. Come on. Oh yeah. Stay on there, baby. That's who we wanted to get one anyway. Oh. All right, I don't have a ton. God, he's going. Just let him run. Sorry. All good. What I like to do is, once we get up on this fish, I want you to tighten that drag to about three pounds or four pounds. Okay. And we're gonna continually, like, keep beating Increase on him. Increase like, it? Yeah, because it's like him walking up a hill, like you walking up a hill with a backpack. Gotcha. He put 10 pounds of more weight in it, it's harder and harder, so. No kidding. You keep adding to him, and it'll, it'll mentally beat him. Ooh, <laughs> a little careful that high lift. I'm just, you know, putting all the heat I can on this fish to that I knew it was, I mean, on the verge of either popping the leader or popping the rod. There he's up on the flat now. Pretty stuff. Probably the worst size fish you can ever hook. You know, 90 to 100 pounds, they usually are gonna fight you tooth and nail until you just wanna break them off, and that's what this fish did. Every time I saw him pull him back, I thought the rod was gonna explode. You know, I was constantly wincing, trying to get out of the way, and you could tell this was, you know, bad to the bone, 90 to 100 pound tarpon. I might have showed up to gun gunfight with a knife. It was cool to kinda get, step onto RT's boat and step into his world and share a really small little little area that they fished with him and his boys, you know? And it was literally him and his two kids on their boats out, out on this unreal tarpon bite in the afternoon, in the evening. There you go. <sighs> little jump, girl. One thing I've noticed with him is every time I go out with him, you learn something new. I mean, the guy, like, he'll pull out a, you know, pull out a trick or tell you something that you've never even heard of or would even think of. All right. What a job, Chris. Nice fish. Awesome. The thing about RT is, is you know, when he comes fishing with me, uh, most gotcha. guys you think they're that good of a fisherman and, you know, have as many accolades as him would be kind of hard-headed, stuck in their ways. You know, anytime you tell him something or, you know, explain something to him, he's, like, eager to learn. He's never I one of those guys like, oh, no, I, just, I do it this way. He's always, you know, he's trying to learn new stuff, and that's why he is, the you know, the fisherman that he is because he has an open mind. And There you go, Beautiful. baby. Beautiful. Look at him go, bro. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that took about 45 minutes. Yep. RT. Nice job, Thanks, buddy. brother. Way to go. Yeah, Cody, what a way, way to end our vacation, huh? I know, man. That's awesome. Good yeah. job, brother. Awesome. Good. Dude, good times, man. Thank yeah, you man, so that was awesome. much. Well, it was great to get to take you guys out. I, Cody called me, and I said, well, yeah, I could go tarpon fish. I love that. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. Well, Better Cody, knife to a gunfight. What were you, Cody, oh, for 10 on the pogey? No. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we won't talk about that, RT. I obviously need some practice with the, uh, the, the Key West plastic. <laughs>
we saw the sunset tied on a tarpon in Key West and the ladies were already down Duval Street at the bar. So we figured, you know, end on a high note, got to fish with the legend and uh, having an unbelievable tarpon experience. We were going to put it on the trailer and go join the girls. Fly fishing in 30 knot winds is a, it's just a little easy. So I like to make more challenging. I put my fly line on backwards. I throw the skinny end. Real, real, he ate the cork. He ate the cork, stop. <laughs> he just ate the cork. That was gnarly. He just ate the cork.